So, summit day, September 30th. <laughs> What's going on? Um, We're done. We're going home. I think the idea behind the expedition of Makalu was I was sort of looking for that next big challenge in the Himalaya after Everest and something that I could push myself in another realm of high altitude climbing and that was climbing without oxygen as well as adding a ski component. Adrian had attempted to climb and ski Makalu in 2012. Makalu is the fifth tallest mountain in the world and when you climb Everest or other mountains in the Himalaya you're just staring at this huge peak that sits all by itself. It's totally inspiring. And when Em and I were looking for a project together, we figured we could put together this sort of dream team um, of great athletes, great skiers, great climbers, and, and see what we could get done on the mountain. Good at failing. <laughs> <laughs> Masters of failure. Sure, but I don't want to climb. They're scared. They're part of the team. For me, I realized in the summer of 2015 how truly serious the expedition was going to be and how much it was going to challenge me and we pretty much dedicated our entire summer to training. I love putting myself into extreme environments and extreme situations and I love pushing myself and I've found the best way to do that is in the mountains and it's something that has become very much a part of who I am, and I don't really know any other way to live. On the mountain, we were planning on, I think we were seven weeks on the mountain itself. So first we had a 10 day trek to base camp, and that was all together, the entire team, hundreds of porters and the whole thing, trekking through a valley to get to the base. And we built our main base camp at 18,700 feet, which is already pretty high, but the mountain's 28,000 feet tall. And then that next 10,000 feet, in order for our bodies to survive, we have to go up and down and up and down, allowing our bodies to build red blood cells. And so we would progressively move up to a new camp, establish it, and then drop back down to rest and recover, and then go up again. So you actually climb the mountain numerous times before you go for a summit push. Making the decision to not try is what's so hard. Yeah. yeah. But you're making the decision to not try for all the right reasons. And you know that. Right? Yeah. It's not out of lack of effort or desire or attempt. It's just two Sherpa almost died and they just, pushed themselves far enough to say almost irregardless of what happens, they're not going to try again. <clears throat> Sitting in that tent and hearing them. They were like on the verge of being angry. You don't want that. We consciously wanted to be like an equal team, all working um, as much as we could. And these are Sherpa I've worked with for more than a decade. Emily's worked with since her Everest climb in 2012. And so um, it's pretty fun. It really feels like we're all teammates. Yeah. And they're, they're having a lot of fun. They'll go and work all day climbing yeah. to 25,000 feet, drop back down to base camp and be playing like soccer outside, you know, when we can barely stand up straight. Thank you so much. And to give up in a way that doesn't feel like I put my haul in it is really fucking awesome. I'll do it and I'll get over it. In 10 minutes, I'll be fine. But it's really, 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 really fucking hard. But we're going to go skiing. And I think the first one was literally just a day. We just went mm -hmm. up to 21,000 feet, turned around and skied back down. It was probably three weeks before we spent a night at Camp 4 for the first time and we're going for the summit. So it was three weeks of that process of going up, acclimatizing, coming down, resting, going up again. What's going on, Em? <sighs> that was super deep. Right? <sighs> Hard day. So cold. 
So your body's just burning so many calories just existing above 18,000 feet. And so there's this constant sort of degradation of your body and muscles while you're up there. We're a lot of tears above 24,000 <laughs> feet at night. It's a, it's a suffering process. You'll wake up and be like gasping for breath because you, your, your body's not getting enough oxygen. Well, and the reality is, is we're all people that the reason we're here is because we've, we've spent a lot of time in the mountains making our own decisions. And it's really hard to listen to someone else's decision and say, oh yeah, that's, that's the reality. I think your point of had it been you and I up there yesterday, it got avalanched. And had you got, had I basically dug you out of those big blocks, yeah. you would have come down and said, we're done. Yeah. This expedition's over. Yeah. And it's really hard to take that from someone else, whoever it is. It's hard for me to take it until I see it. The avalanche occurred. We were all at Camp 4, two chauffeurs, four of us, when Paulden and Mingmo were avalanched. And there were actually three avalanches. So a small one that didn't have much effect on the climbers, but sort of gave them a heads up that something was unstable. Then a second one that was bigger, but didn't take either of them. And, you know, they told us that after that, they stopped and they prayed for a while and decided that they should continue. And then they continued. And it was the third avalanche that caught Mingma and took him for a big ride. Um, and he and we were really lucky that he ended up with only bruised ribs and sort of banged up and not taken much further um, or buried. Yeah, and so that's why I think I was of the opinion I want to stay a week and try so we could see it for ourselves. Yeah. But the team vibe, we let I think it's very clear that our need to see it for ourselves is not nearly worth the capital it would cost and the unfairness it would put on our teammates. Yeah. I think I was pretty much done after that. That sort of just like sealed the deal for me that that I had had an amazing experience, but that it just wasn't, it, it wasn't meant to be this time around. What ultimately came round, I think, that morning at 25 and a half thousand feet or 26,000 feet was we are not 100% driven and committed to this goal. And it is far too dangerous to stick around without that level of commitment. In a lot of ways, success in the conventional sense of the word is very much not in our control. In a lot of ways, that's just up to the mountain and the conditions. And the only decisions that we can make are the, the ones that enable us to stay safe. And had you been caught in an avalanche and you've been flying out tomorrow because of your ribs, it would be the wrong call for me. Take the Sherpa out of it. Four Sherpa never existed. We did this by ourselves and somehow we got here without them. Let's just say we could have. We couldn't have, but let's say we could have. And you were the one with the injured ribs. <coughs> I would be making the same call I'm making now, I think. Um, yeah. Okay. Done now, so. Cool. That's what it's all about. It's about going out there and pushing yourself as hard as you possibly can, but also making good decisions that enable you to come home and learning from those decisions and those experiences and then going back out and doing it all over again. And hopefully you can be better next time. Yeah, thank you guys. I know it sucks. We have the best team ever though. We do have an awesome team. Nobody and said fuck you. It's not it's not the call I want personally. <laughs> nobody even yeah, nobody got the fuck you from me. Nobody Hillary <laughs> didn't say fuck you to anybody. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Makalu stays unskied another year.
young athletes like us who are willing to go out there and share our story and, and fail and share that story is, I mean, I believe it's a positive thing for our world um, and for our industry and for the outdoor community because it shows that you can make the decision to turn around. It's okay. You know, I, I feel like there should be more stories like that out there because that's real life. And we want to make a career out of this and do it for the rest of our lives. And so, I mean, I'm not about to make a decision that's going to be one that I believe is dangerous or scary, just for the headlines. <laughs> yep.